So in this video, I want to introduce you to velocity time graphs. Okay? So velocity time, let's plot a graph. So here is time on the horizontal axis measured in seconds. And here is velocity, the vertical axis, measured in meters per second. Okay? And let's say we think about a particle that is moving in a straight line. It starts from rest, say. Okay? So at time zero, the velocity is zero. So initially, the particle is at rest. After five seconds, the velocity of the particle is 10 meters per second. OK? It then continues at this speed for another five seconds. OK? It then decelerates. OK? Let's say in the next, let's go with uh, five seconds again. So uh, up to 15 seconds, that makes it. OK? So it has accelerated up to 10 meters per second. It then travels at 10 meters per second and then decelerates down to zero again. So at this point, it is stationary. Okay. It then uh, starts to accelerate for the remaining five seconds. So let's put this up to 20. Okay. So it accelerates in the remaining 20 seconds, but it now is going in the opposite direction. OK, and so it reaches, let's say it reaches um, minus 5 metres per second. OK, so this represents the particle's uh, velocity over time for the first 20 seconds of its motion. OK, now what can we decipher from this uh, from this velocity time graph. What can we say about it? Well, as I was describing the particle's motion, I talked about the particle accelerating between 0 and 5 seconds, up to 10 metres per second. So clearly, this positive gradient is representing the acceleration. Okay, The steepness of that will represent its acceleration. So the steeper the line, the faster it is accelerating. OK? And this makes sense because we know that an acceleration is metres per second per second. And what are we doing there? Well, we are getting the difference in the y-coordinates, OK, which is the velocity, which is a metres per second. And then we are dividing it by a time. So difference in y divided by difference in x, which is, and the time's measured in seconds. So metres per second divided by seconds gives us the metres per second per second. So the actual dimensional analysis that we're doing there, the uh, looking at the units, it makes sense that the gradient of a velocity time graph is equal to the acceleration of the particle. So for the first five seconds, we've got the difference in the y, 10, divided by the difference in the x, 5. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. So the gradient for the first five seconds is 2 metres per second per second. For the next five seconds, between 5 and 10 seconds, well, the acceleration is 0 because the change in velocity is 0. OK? Velocity is unchanging. So... The acceleration here is 0 metres per second per second. Now, for the third section, between 10 and 15 seconds, we've got going from 10 down to 0. So 10 divided by 5 is 2, but it's negative gradient. And so the acceleration here will be negative 2 metres per second per second. So here, the acceleration is representing um, a decrease in the velocity, so we are slowing down, OK? Whereas here, when I find the acceleration of this part of the graph, the final five seconds, OK, then I am doing the difference in the y, which is 5, divided by difference in the x, which is 5, so, my, so 1. It's going downwards, so it's minus 1, so minus 1 metres per second per second, OK? 
Now here, what that is representing, because the velocity is going in the negative direction, that means that I'm accelerating in the negative direction. So you've got this particle that is starting at rest. First five seconds, it is slowly increasing, and then it speeds up and then hits a certain speed. It then goes on for that speed for the next five seconds. It then starts to decelerate, so decelerate down to zero. And then at this point, it starts to accelerate again, but going in the opposite direction. OK, so that's what's going on. And we can talk about the gradient using that. Now, there's one other thing that you can get from a velocity time graph. And that is coming from the fact that if you think about the area between the line and the x-axis, OK, so what would we have? So I would have an area that is based on meters per second. So multiplying meters per second by seconds, which will give me just meters. So in actual fact, the area between the line and the x-axis, or the time axis, actually gives me the displacement of the particle. So the displacement of the particle in the first five seconds is actually the area of that triangle. So I can do half base times height. So half uh, five times 10 is 25. So it's 25 meters that it has traveled in that first five seconds. In the second five seconds, I've got 5 by 10, so 50 meters. In the next five seconds, this is 25 meters again, because I've got half base times height, which gives me the 25. And then finally, in this triangle, okay, I've got half base times height, which would be half of 5 times 5, so 12 and a half meters. Now, if you were talking about, well, what was the total distance that was traveled? Well, we went 100 meters, OK, in that direction. And then I went 12 and a half meters back this direction. So the total distance that I covered was 112.5 meters. The total displacement, however, is 25 plus 50 plus 25 take away 12.5, so 87.5 metres. That's how far I, um, I've, I am at the end of the travel, at the end of that uh, 20 seconds, away from my starting position, which I was considering as the origin. OK, so that's how the distance and displacement can be read off differently from a velocity time graph. So you've got the acceleration, you've got displacement, you've got distance. That's why a velocity time graph is so often used in exam questions because there's so many things that can be asked from it.